Please welcome to the stage, Mel Mosley! I wake up, and his dick is still in my ass. The night before, I, um, my boyfriend, Ron, and I just got back from a ski trip, and we had been drinking on the plane, and we were drinking when we got home, and then... Um, I went to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night in excruciating pain and I realized that Ron was on top of me and he was fucking me in the ass. Now this is nothing that we had ever done before, nothing that I had ever consented to, but that was happening. And I started screaming and he took my head and he put my face into the pillow and I kept screaming until I passed out. And in the morning, I said, uh, what was that all about? And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, uh, you were fucking me in the ass. And he said, uh, well, you said that that was okay. I don't remember saying that, but I was drunk. So maybe I did. Um, and he was so apologetic. I stayed with him after that. Um, we broke up later for completely different reasons. But um, from that moment on, I could not feel this part of my body. Um, I went on and I had a variety of monogamous relationships with men and from time to time, they would say, hey, um, I'd like to have anal sex with you and I would say yes because I wanted to please them. But every single time, it either hurt or I felt nothing. And then um, in my mid-40s, so this happened, my, uh, what happened with my anal rape, um, I was 32. In my mid-40s, uh, I discovered polyamory <laughs> and sex positivity. What the fuck? And I began to realize that I can actually explore my body and enjoy it. It was, yes, thank you. It was fucking amazing. Yes. Um, I started having sex with men, women, and groups. Hell yeah. Um, as a teen, I recognized that I was bisexual, but I didn't really explore that as an adult until I discovered polyamory and I started to get back into that um, piece of my body and recognizing that uh, I was sexual with women. So, it, they, yeah, fuck, amazing, I can't, yeah. I, I can't even tell you that. I bought my first vibrator at 47. Okay, that's old. Buy your vibrator earlier than that. Just, <laughs> please do that, but I didn't. I got it at 47. Um, yeah, so then at 53, um, I became part of a triad. Now we are in Portland, so I probably don't need to define this here. <laughs> but <laughs> for those of you listening to the podcast or who <laughs> are not in Portland, you may not know what that is. So um, I am part of a triad. I am in a relationship with two other people. In my case, it's a man and a woman. Um, Charity and Cliff, uh, and we live together. Um, we are family. Our kids know each other. We go on vacation together. In fact, we just recently just got back from a trip to Chicago, the three of us. Um, we know each other's families. We have holidays together. Uh, this is family. Our kids know each other. Yeah. So settling into that. Um, Charity and I describe Cliff 
as our Cylon Boy Scout. <laughs> because he's fucking hot, and he has this ridiculous body, and if he gets sick, it will take him 12 hours to recover. And for me and Charity, it will take us 12 days. So, yeah, yeah, he's just like, ah, eh. and also he will fix anything. And he'll also set up your camp if you want him to do that. Because <laughs> he's the Boy Scout. And um, Charity is my scrappy best friend that I met in middle age. Um, we like to wear matching costumes together. We like to travel together. Um, we go on trips. Um, uh, yeah, so that is Charity and Cliff. Um, we also, I, I probably don't even need, we have sex together. <laughs> like, we do that. Like, I, bisexual Mel, gets to have sex with a man and a woman. What? Crazy awesome. Yeah, so, super awesome. We are also very experimental with what we do sexually. So, um, one of us might say, like, I might say, hey, um, I would really like to um, suck Cliff's cock while you, Charity, put on a strap-on and fuck him in the ass. How do we make that happen? And then Cliff will be like, I have an idea. <laughs> and then he will like stack, like engineer a whole shit where like stack up some like pillows or some shit like that so that I can lie underneath and he can lie up this way and then I can suck his cock and then she can stand up above and put on a strap-on and fuck him. So that happens um, <laughs> frequently. Which is amazing, and I love it. Um, I have witnessed Cliff penetrate Charity in the ass, and I have watched her face. And I have watched, listened to her moans, and I have watched the bliss that goes on with her when she is getting penetrated anally. Now, that was something that from the moment that I was anally raped at 30, or 32 was blocked for me. I could not experience any kind of pleasure anally. I have watched Charity put on a strap-on and penetrate Cliff anally. And Cliff says, Mel, it's like nothing else that I have ever experienced. I feel so open and so in touch with my emotions and I know what it is like for a woman every time she allows someone else into her body. He connects to it in that way. And that, to me, is just fucking lovely. And I don't have that. I don't have that doorway into that because that got blocked off when I was 32. So um, Charity and Cliff asked me if I wanted sexual healing around that. Now I knew that was a song. <laughs> Did not know that was a thing. But it is in fact a thing. Um, the bonus is uh, Charity is a psychotherapist and um, Cliff has spent years teaching Tantra. So I was in very good hands <laughs> for this sexual healing event. And um, I said yes. Uh, so Charity held me, we were naked, she held me, and um, she told me that she loved me. I love you. We love you. And Cliff um, lubed up his finger a lot, and very slowly and very carefully put his finger up into my anus, first massaging my anus, and then slowly melding his finger inside of me. 
And he told me that he loved me. Um, and I realized this was not sex to get off. This was sex to get real. And as he entered my body that way and started to massage my G-spot from the underside, he said, you may have emotions, you may not. You may see images, you may not. None of those are you. Just let them float by like clouds on a windy day. And I did have emotions. I cried. I sobbed. I sobbed thinking of ba uh, about past Mel, who was treated like a thing rather than a person by someone that she loved. And I also saw an image. I saw an image of um, this tiny glass heart. It was about the size of a bird's heart. And it was embedded into my chest. And as they massaged me and told me that they loved me, that bird's heart was pulled out of my chest and it flew up into the sky and it shattered all around me. And as that glass fell, I realized I was feeling pleasure in my ass for the first time since I was 32 years old. It was magical. <laughs> um, a year after that, uh, we were, uh, Charity Cliff and I were, um, we had rented a house with a bunch of friends um, for Easter, because, you know, that's what you do when you want to have a sex party. Um, <laughs> so we had a sex party at Easter with a bunch of friends, yeah, and egg hunts and all that shit. But anyway, um, <laughs> seriously, it was awesome. So... We're there, we're having this like giant sex party and everything's great. Uh, like I said, Charity and I love to wear matching costumes. Um, that year for Christmas, we had bought each other um, matching rainbow wigs, um, rainbow boots, and matching rainbow tail butt plugs. Um, you know, because that's what you do. Anyway, so sex party's going on. I decide, you know what? I want to go off on my own for a little bit. And I go into our bedroom and I decide I am going to put on this fucking outfit by myself. So I put on the rainbow wig. I put on my rainbow boots. I pull out that rainbow butt plug. I lube that thing up. This is the first time I'm doing this on my own. And I very slowly put that butt plug into my ass. And it enters me and feels so good. I am feeling so strong. I look over at the uh, full-length mirror in my rainbow wig, my butt plug, and my rainbow boots, <laughs> and I am a fucking magical unicorn, <laughs> and I consider that a fucking victory.